you are now listening to Through the Fryer. Sit down, no shade, but phones on. You want something to see to talk about, and I have something to give you. Here we go. Open with through the, the fryer. rest they close. Really, you don't have no windows. Hell, but it's okay. okay too. I'm Super Saber. No. The ratings are back, and, and now so. we have five listeners. Yes. Listen. Thank you for tuning in to Through the Fryer. Hello everyone, this is Justin Bass and I am back with the brand new podcast of Through the Friar. I'm so excited to be back to bring you an update on what's been going on in my life and just the journey of an artist, of a person, and of someone who is just trying to make it out in these crazy ass streets. So first I want to say to everyone that's listening, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I just have to say and remind everyone that this is completely done by me, this podcast. There's not a lot of editing that goes into it. There's no bleeps. There's no production. It's just me, my blue um, microphone, my headset, um, my boyfriend's laptop, and just a chance for me to vent and hope that my story is touching or relating to yours and can be helped because on this journey I feel like we as people sometimes we have a difficult time finding people that have a connection or we are afraid to connect and and today I feel like that's what we need and I really hope that my journey or my story which is actually not that original can help you speak about yours or can help you to continue to fight for what you are doing right now today if you're waking up that means that you're fighting if you're breathing right now that means that you're fighting if you're going to work you are fighting if you're blinking you are fighting for something even if you don't know what it is so yeah i'm just gonna catch you up on what's been going on in my life and i thought it would be great to just do a podcast about how I have been living in New York fucking city for five months, okay, continuously. Not a summer program for three months and coming back, not doing a gig and then living in and off. I have been living in New York City, Brooklyn to be exact, for five months. And I just want to let you know the struggle because I was actually listening to another podcast and, you know, she made an amazing point about how we're so quick to post our accomplishments and post how we have been making it but no one is really posting about the struggle so I want to tell you about the struggle and I also want to tell you about the success of you know uprooting your life changing everything and just wanting to take yourself to another level spiritually physically or in your career so yeah, um, I moved here five months ago, July 1st to be exact, with my partner, our dog, and our sugar glider. And before I moved here, I was living in Salt Lake City, Utah, dancing professionally with the company for five years. And I was teaching, I was dancing full time. You know, I was booked and it was great, but I felt that I have become very comfortable you know, very stuck, but stuck in something good. And I think I started to notice that being stuck in something good is just as bad as being, you know, being stuck doing nothing because it becomes a routine. It becomes um, a trend for yourself. And then you start to experience the sameness of it all. And I'm a Taurus and I don't know what that really has to do with it, but I just know that I do not like to feel that I'm done with something, where I'm settled. So I made a choice for myself to say, you like, you know what, I want to move. And it's, it was on my mind, and I already knew I wanted to leave my job. And my partner, he just graduated college, and he was like, I think I want to go to New York. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, I've always wanted to, you know, go to New York and it's been a dream of mine like I remember stepping off the Amtrak years ago and being like shit this is where my soul is like I know I was born here this that ain't my mama in Cleveland something happened this is where I need to be because the energy was just pumping through my body just walking those streets and feeling like I felt apart and so I you know fast forward I would come back and forward to the city 
you know, to do programs or to do work. And I was like, okay, I need to live here. And it took me about 10 years to actually get here because I already had a, it was already something set up for me that I did not know about. You know, me dancing professionally somewhere, me touring and having all these amazing opportunities while I was in college and right when I got out, which if you're an artist, you know, to get a job right out of school is extremely rare, extremely difficult and challenging. But I I got that job. Yes, I was very lucky from a few, but I also worked extremely hard to have those opportunities. And after doing that consistently where everything was planned out for me, where there was a schedule for me, there was a performance date, there was a rehearsal, I was like, shit, you know, I want to start doing my own work. So I started to create a vessel for myself in Salt Lake City as a choreographer. And I started working with other artists inside the community. And that started to stimulate me for a bit, but then I start coming to a point where I'm like, okay, now this is becoming the same, or the work that I was doing is not going up against anything. You know, I was in a very non-diverse place where everything I did because I was an African-American gay male was just, you know, it was crazy. It was mind-blowing to them. It was revolutionary, which is way too big of a word. But everything I did was like, oh my gosh, this is so fresh. And I'm thinking like, well, if you just Google or go on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram, you'll see that actually I'm kind of behind. Like this is already being seen in New York. People are already coming up with these ideas in L.A. People are just afraid to do them in Salt Lake because, you know, it's going to be so much pushback or because it's not supported. So once I put my work out there and I got, you know, great you know, great reviews back and things like that, I'm like, I need to put myself up against some people that are really pushing shit, you know, and... That's where I was like, okay, so once I move to New York and once we go, I'm going to just dive in into making some work. Like, I'm going to get ready to start making these shows. Of course, I want to continue to perform. I want to invest in my performance ability. So, but I want to perform against the best. Now, the people I was working with, they were amazing. But when you're with the same people for five years, it becomes like, okay, like, where is the, you know, where's the juice you know like we're not boxing anymore we kind of just putting on each other gloves which is amazing but i'm ready i wanted to still feel something fresh for someone so me leaving was you know a really good moment for me to say like you know i want to be around some people who's still hungry some people who play is not full or they can show up and they can still get fed you know i want you know moving to new york i've seeing how people show up and they will not be seen they will not be fed and that's just the hustle and i've missed that and i still have a lot of fight inside of me but i definitely feel like i'm in a different place like i was just recently talking to my roommate this morning about how um you know years ago if i would have came to new york city when i got straight out of school i would have taken up any call any audition any moment i don't care if they would have sent me to Texas or something like that for weeks but I'm just not in that place anymore because I have performed professionally I have done things and by all means that does not mean that I'm too big to take on any job but I definitely know exactly what I want and why I decided to move here like I just didn't come here to get a job and leave I came here to lay some roots to really invest in my artistry and to go deeper into it And it's taken me a moment to be like, okay, like, where do you want to go with this? And honestly, these five months, I have become lost. And it's crazy to say that out loud because I recently just did like a little poem or whatever about being lost. But, you know, I was talking to my partner. I'm just like, you know, I do not know exactly where I want to go or want to do after being here. Because it's really different when you're in a place where there's no opportunities or less to to none. And you're thinking like, oh, if this was here or if this was happening right now, I would be doing so much. Or why isn't this show coming here? Or why can't I audition for this here? Why is everything in New York? Why is everything in L.A.? And then when you get to actually being in those places and it's unlimited opportunities, you see around you you forget about all the things to get to those opportunities. Um, The train, um, having money, having a job to pay your rent. Certain things just come crashing down on you 
when you make a move and you don't think about that. Like you're so ambitious and you're so confident that this move, everything is going to sprout up that you forgot that or I forgot that it took me five years to get to where I was there. And here is probably going to take shorter because everything moves extremely fast. So being here in New York, I mean, it's been a lot of priority building. It's been a lot of me just calming down me reevaluating my situation and taking the time to invest in things that are going to help my artistry go to another level and that's really dependent on the classes that I take the events that I show up to because now every check that I have it has to have a purpose because here everything is not cheap you know other than just living just getting a drink (laughs) is expensive you know making sure you have fare to get to something in manhattan and i was just talking to my friend about like oh um since i got my new job i expected you know since i have all this free time that i would just be in and out of the city just going and seeing shows but actually i've been more inside the house in brooklyn in my apartment just recharging you know i find myself like okay let me look up auditions let me look up these things and i'm just like yeah, but is it really that bad of a thing to find a moment of stillness, a moment of breath? Because when you're working at such a, a level of anxiety of I need, 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 need this, something that comes out of it is going to be at that level. And how can you deal with that type of energy? You know, how do you balance out your inner balance with something that is unbalanced? So I'm really learning to take the time to invest in the research and the projects and the classes that I want to do because I do feel like the things that I show up for they have a huge impact in what I am deciding on what I want to do so I'm looking up artists I'm listening to podcasts of things to give me information of just where to start because the reality is is that when you go on a new path you know you are starting from square one but you do have a lot of information on yourself by now You know, you're just not out just spending things recklessly and just deciding that, oh, this is going to happen. When in reality, your expectations have become something of your own creation. You know, when I go to these auditions, I'm like, of course, I want the job. Of course, I want the gig. But at the same time, this is not life or death for me right now. You know, life or death for me is not being able to do my craft at all. And I think me putting myself in that particular space has really helped me to not be broken by not getting these callbacks or not getting these opportunities or seeing people who have gotten these opportunities and really challenging myself to be like, look, I'm so happy for that person I don't know or that person who just got that callback or got that gig. Because at the end of the day, that gig that they got is that gig in that moment. Nobody's job is going to be lifelong, especially not in the arts. Everyone is moving on to a new show. Everyone is writing something new. There's a new script. There's a new idea happening. And I was like, you know what? Something is going to happen. It's going to happen. And I don't know what that thing is, but I know if I keep showing up or if I decide to miss one that I don't that I don't feel like it's going to do anything for me, then that's completely fine. I think just being valid in my choices and me sticking to my guns about what I want to do is really the game changer for me. That showing up just for everything and for things that have no value to you or what you want to create for yourself, you know, it's a waste of time. And since time is fleeting for all of us, why give in to that? So, yeah, I've been in an, a really still place. Like, I just went to Twitter. And if you want to follow, it's just underscore I am underscore live. And I was like, you know what? The power of stillness is just ridiculous because it really has made me reevaluate, you know, my balance of myself and me being able to see everything in my surroundings. I'm starting to really feel like me being not pushed and pulled in so many different ways when I first moved here has really made me see like, okay, that's not something I'm really interested in doing. Or maybe working with that person would be great. But the opportunity hasn't come up. So how do I prepare myself to be ready for the opportunity to come up? Because now since I have a moment of relaxation and just to just be settled, 
I feel like now when something comes in a different direction and I feel very prepared and I won't feel like overwhelmed because it's very easy to become overwhelmed, especially when you want something to happen. And because I'm in a place where there's so many opportunities, it took me a while to be like, it's okay if you don't go to this thing. It is okay if you decide to give yourself a break. And that's the hardest thing is that you to tell yourself that if you miss something or decide not to go to something that you're not being lazy or you're being crazy for not you know being out there and why aren't you at this call but in reality every call is not meant for you to answer so I'm like you know what it's a reason my gut is like sit your ass down take a second and just breathe you know it's going to it's a cycle things happen so after being here for five months I have really heavily invested in a lot of couching a lot of research. I have been listening to a lot of great podcasts. One podcast that I recommend is called Off Book, uh, Broadway Black, and it's and it's been really helping me rediscover myself and honestly my blackness because I have not been around a lot of diversity. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm in an interracial interracial relationship, but not a ton of my partner is like racist or nothing like that. But he ain't black. <laughs> So I'm informing him about my blackness while I'm rediscovering my blackness. And then I'm also thinking, how can I put this into my artistic form, into my voice? You know, I've always had this issue of like, well, is this like, is all my work going to be just about me being black? When reality, yes, because I'm always going to be black. (laughs) You know, I'm like, I think I strayed away so much of just making work with no... I'm not trying to say it wasn't good work, but it didn't have no depth of who I am, no story, no connection of what my roots are. So me taking the time to listen to informative podcasts and people who are investing in our blackness and in who they are, it really has made me think like, OK, you can add this to your work, but in another layer, you know, because I'm really trying to continue my voice or get my voice heard in a way that's like, OK, but where is my individuality in my blackness? You know, where is my solo journey? Because we all have similar stories. It's honestly the way that we decide to tell it. What's the form? Is it going to be in a script? Is it going to be in a dance? Is it going to be through a podcast? Is it going to be in a film? You know, where do we decide to have our voice? What's the medium of that? So I really have, like, really got into this thing where I'm like, I want to do a one-man show. Like, I want to have a moment where there is no repercussions, but let me go back. There is repercussions because it's all on me, where I have to invest in myself so there's something to come out of it. And it's all on me. You know, there's no gamble on no one else showing up for rehearsal. There's no gamble of me not being able to pay somebody. I'm paying myself to put myself out there. And I was like, okay, like, it'd be great to do a duet with someone or something like that, but... I'm so tired of hiding behind people's shadows of what they can do and not trying to say that I don't have a light, but, you know, when you're on stage with somebody else, you, you're you able to put something else on them. You know, it doesn't become 100% about you. It becomes 50-50 or sometimes 75-25. But now I'm in a place where, no, I want to invest in myself and I've been having this idea of doing something extremely avant-garde and because I can sell, like, I want to make a design and I want to let this grow and I want to do something that pulls apart the layers of myself and I just want to just have this story so now I'm in this process of trying to write a poem every day or every other day and I want to do that because I want to I feel like I have a voice whether anyone is listening or not I'm speaking and even if one person is listening to this podcast somebody is hearing about these trials and tribulations of myself so yeah I want to peel back the layers of myself and I want to be completely vulnerable I want to find a moment where I'm very naked on stage not physically who knows maybe that happened but I want to be very naked on stage in myself because I want to be open in these in these changes in these moments And it's a scary thing to think about investing in yourself like that. But I feel like if I don't do that first, then I'm really not giving myself the chance to move forward if if an opportunity was to come my way where it calls for me 
to be myself, to be invested in who I am. Because I remember doing a crazy audition for Real World, the reality show years ago. And this lady asked around the table, she asked everyone on the table, she was like, oh, so why, you know, what, you know, what's interesting about you? And my answer was, well, it's just me. Like, I'm very interesting. And she was like, I don't know you. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. She do not know me at all. And it's a completely, it's a completely valid response to somebody who is feeling themselves and thinking that just because you walk in a room that you just have this mysterious thing to where, oh, I know who that person is. Oh, that person got the juice. I don't really know them, but it's something about their aura that tells me that there's something. That's not true. You know, it's... If you're not telling it, ain't nobody listening for it. Ain't nobody hearing it. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, how do I develop the story in myself to just let myself be out? And honestly, I can do a show and it could be one person there and I'm completely fine with it. I think it's just the, the act of doing it. The act of putting myself out on that place, in that plane, that that spiritual plane, that physical plane of just like... This is who I am. This is where I want to be, you know, where I want to be and what I would like to be doing. So it's crazy now. I'm finding boredom in things that I used to love where I'm like, oh, I used to love watching all these reality TV shows. I used to love scrolling through the gram and being on Twitter and things like that, which I still do. But now I'm fine. I have so much time with myself. I'm starting that I need to start. I'm starting to feel that I need to start finding myself making myself accountable to be investing in myself in some way. And it doesn't have to be something grand, but it can be one thing. It can be a speck of something to put back into myself. It can be a way to to remind that, hey, you are having an inner dialogue with self because it's something inside of you that you need to have a conversation with and consistently for yourself so you don't get lost or try to become something that you're not. So mentally... I feel like I'm I'm about at a 78. Physically, I want to say about an 82, you know, and then spiritually, I'm at an all-time motherfucking high. No. <laughs> because I feel like I'm starting to feel myself transcend, like I'm starting to find myself being be very patient. You know, I'm not drinking as much, mainly because I can't afford it, but honestly, because I'm getting bored of it. There's not much to come out of it. I'm not hanging around a lot of people right now because I'm finding myself enjoying teaching little kids creative movement and these moments of just discovery of myself. I'm not going out to the clubs and hitting the stuff as much. Because I'm starting to understand that my investment in going out is taken away from my investment in going to go see a show that can be life changing for me. And even though I still love to do all those things, I have to remind myself that making certain sacrifices is only going to be better for what I do. Because everything I see, everything I hear, everything I taste at this moment is very crucial because I'm very vulnerable right now. So opening up my senses and moving to a new place, I have to understand that, you know, it's some things are going to stick on to me and you don't even know it. The people you interact with, the shows that you see, the podcasts that you listen to, the TV shows that you watch, when you're open and you don't have much shit to do, it's going to start sticking on to you and informing you in ways. And you either become jaded about it or you become extremely open to things. So putting myself in spaces that allow me to be like, okay, I can feel that or that was different or, you know, or that just challenges you to think as a person on another level. Those are investments, you know, and it, and it's not I mean, it's not a money thing. It's a it's a mental thing. You know, it's a it's a mind, body, spirit thing that you have constantly decided to invest in what you're seeing to inform what you want to be doing for yourself investing in what you're seeing so that it can inform what you want to do for yourself investing in what you are seeing so that it can inform you in what you want to be doing for yourself it's crazy and it can be as simple as what you read and what you listen to 
So, yes, five months in this bitch. And I have to tell you that it is not easy, but we all know that. We all see the New York TV shows and we see people talking about, well, it's so expensive and how are you affording this and that. I'm like, I am here because I am meant to be here. And I'm also here because I haven't left yet. That's a lot of reasons why people are where they're at. Not because they got pushed out or because they didn't have the funds or things like that. It's because they decided to leave. That's the only real way to be gone from a situation. So, I mean... Think of that. Somebody's asking, how did you survive? Because you decided to stay. You decided to weather the storm. You decided that, you know what? At any moment, I could have packed my shit up. I could have went back to my comfortable life. I'm sure it wouldn't have taken that much time to get my job back or do things like that. But you decided, but no, I don't want that. I'm okay with being broke in this moment because that does not mean that I'm broke, you know, entirely. Like, I'm not actually really broke. You know, I'm actually here because I'm, I want to be fulfilled more than just monetary gain. I'm actually interested in being filled with other things. That's why I left the place where I had health insurance, where I had money, where I had consistency, because that became something that wasn't enough. So when people are asking you or wondering how you're surviving somewhere, it's because you decided to survive. You decided that, you know what? This six pack of not a dollar and ninety six ramen noodles is gonna be good until I get paid because I really motherfucking wanna be here. Yes, I miss Chipotle. Yes, I miss all this shit, but it ain't gonna happen this week because I gotta pay for my train. I gotta get to this gig or I wanna really see this show, and it means a lot to me because now I'm in a place where there's no excuses that I can't see art or that I can't see a certain level of art. It's all around you. So now, since there's no excuses that you can hide behind. And you can, you have opportunities. There's really you, you know, you're the reason that you haven't went to go see these shows or haven't went to this museum or haven't invested and working on yourself. So, yeah, I have been finding moments to put time into my one man show to start writing some poetry. I used to do a lot of poetry in school, but yeah, I'm just thinking like, what's the best way for me to bring myself full circle and this is and when I say full circle understand that this is endless laps like it's unlimited laps like there is no how many times do you circle yourself before you find yourself in the center it's like how long can you endure type of laps you know you find a pace for yourself you find um you find a moment where okay I need to stop and get water for a second then I need to keep lapping around because you're building stamina and you're building endurance for yourself to weather a bigger storm because that is that's what happens it's a cycle just because you made it through one storm don't mean it just not gonna keep coming now you become better at it you have become more prepared you have brought yourself some very necessary tools from the last fiasco that could help you push you forward And everything is not a moment of just surprise. It's like, okay, I expected this. And even in the opportunities that I have not been given yet, you know, I have definitely been able to see like, you know what? That just opened up more time for this. Now I have the schedule for that. Oh, now I can actually do this. And this is working out. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I feel like now I want to start investing in just knowing more about my culture as a as a black person and about black people who are doing work out here putting myself in those mediums and just starting to and you know discovering who I am and where where and how I want to tell my story and I really think the one man show is a really good start for me and I really think that surrounding myself around people that are creating work of value but not like work of value where like oh, this person has a big name and they're going to be amazing. Now, somebody who's investing in themselves, and I'm like, and they think that what they're doing is value because then that's going to be to me that it's the same thing. So, five months living in New York City, it has been great. It has been challenging. It has been a whirlwind of things. But I'm, I want you to take a second and ask yourself, where are you at right now at this moment? Do you feel like you have found a moment of stillness? So where if a wave was to come your way, it would do nothing to you. If something crashed on you right now, would you still be still? 
Because finding a moment of strength and stillness is a whole nother moment of being woke, being ready, being conscious of the next thing that's coming your way. So find a moment of silence for yourself. Find a moment to break your routine. Find a moment to say, you know what, this is going to be a good day. This is going to be exactly what I want. Or shit, find a moment to yell. Definitely find a moment to look in the mirror and say, I'm that bitch. Because I'm on this journey for a reason. And then start to accumulate ideas and things for yourself. That's going to add to you continuing to discover who you are. Because it just takes a moment. It takes a minute. It takes it takes no time to start asking yourself, okay, how am I right now at this moment? And where do I want to go and invest in that? So, yeah, I just wanted to come onto the podcast and give you a little something, something of how I've been feeling lately and where I'm at. And also to give myself a pat on the back for continuing to fight this fight in one of the hardest places to live and against some of the best artists in the world. Where I'm at now, I'm not going against them, but I'm telling you now, it is a competition. It is in that way. And it's and it's refreshing. And it's also very eye-opening it makes you see where you are and where you want to be up against all these things, all these callbacks, all these auditions, all these people that want the same thing. And they might want it in a different way or they might be there for a different thing. But when you're all in the same room, all bets are off and it becomes a, a fight for yourself to just be like, I'm focused and I really want this. And you'll know if you don't want it even when you're in the room. So, yeah, continue to push. Definitely continue to love yourself. And continue to tell your story and listen to other people's stories and let it inform what you want to do for yourself. So thank you for listening to, I want to say, a really good short um, podcast of Through the Friar. It's about 31 minutes. And if you haven't, um, wrote a review on iTunes. Just go to Through the Friar. Say how you like uh, this podcast. I feel like I'm offering a very human experience, something that's very honest, something very raw. And if you do feel like you are feeling those vibes, I would love to hear you review this podcast so we can just get more people to hear. And I would love, I ask this every week, I would love some questions, some things about like what could be next or what's the trials and tribulations and things like that. But until then, I'm going to keep coming on this podcast and I'm going to keep telling my truth. I'm going to keep taking the time to just vent and hope that what I'm saying hits the core with somebody out there. So, yeah, follow um, on iTunes. You can also listen to this on Podbean. Um, it's also it also uploads on YouTube, which is very different, which is on my YouTube page. And you can just listen to it on there as well. So, yeah, thank you for listening to another podcast of Through the Fire. Friar. I am Justin Bass and have a great rest of your day.